I'm glad to get this time with you to continue our study through the devotions of the book of Acts. And today we're in Acts chapter 17, verses 16 through 34. There's so much content in all of these verses. Um, so I just want to point out a couple things that came to mind for me. Um, at the very beginning in Acts 16, it tells that Paul is waiting for Silas and Timothy um, to come to him there in Athens. And it says his spirit was provoked within him as he saw that the city was full of idols. And if you go on to read, um, you find out that even though he was greatly stirred and distressed at seeing all these false idols um, that the, the community was worshiping and distracted by, um, he didn't have major conversations or um, battles or <laughs> confrontations. He came alongside, and you see in the next several verses, um, that he had conversations um, with people of different beliefs um, and different backgrounds from him. Um, and a lot of them chose to listen because of um, the way he wanted to have a conversation about things. I love, as it goes on, it talks about how Paul then said, here's where we have a common common language um, and he pointed out that there in all of their idols that he saw there was even an idol that said to the unknown God and that that these individuals um, tried to have all the right idols um, because that's what they were worshiping and they wanted to make sure they covered all their bases that even if they didn't have the specific idol they thought they were supposed to have that the unknown God statue then would cover their bases if um, their gods came to them and were mad. And again, all bases weren't covered. And so here they didn't even know what they were worshiping. They didn't even know um, what they had their faces towards. And I just think of kind of where we're at right now with so many varying emotions and varying um, things that can be a distraction to us um, that maybe we can't even put a word um, to the things that, that are taking our attention. And I love that Paul again comes back to that common language and says, I see even here that you have the inscription to the unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. And I'm reading from verse 24 now. The God who made the world and everything in it, being Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in temples made by man nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mankind life and breath and everything. And he made from one man every nation of mankind to live on all the face of the earth, having determined allotted periods and the boundaries of their dwelling place, that they should seek God in the hope that they might feel their way toward him and find him. Yet he is actually not far from each of us, for in him we live and move and have our being. As even some of, some of your own poets have said, for we indeed are his offspring. Being then God's offspring, we ought not to think that the divine being is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art or imagination of man. The times of ignorance God overlooked. Now he commands all people everywhere to repent because he has fixed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this, he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. And again, as Paul meets in this situation to have these conversations, he brings it right back to the gospel. He uses their common language, but then says, there's not an unknown God. There is a God to be known, and he's the God of the universe, and he's the God who's come for each and every one of us. And I don't know, I was just encouraged with those words powerfully today. So to read scripture specifically of what Paul said to these individuals as they were lost and searching um, with the wrong idols. And so that's my encouragement for you today. Um, Maybe you don't have a title to the things that are distracting you and pulling you away from being reminded of who the one true God is. And I just pray that you are finding time in God's word and you are encouraged by his word more than any distractions of this world. Thanks for spending time.